Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to Indie Comics Review. I'm your host Lorenzo, and this week I'm going to do like reviews on six books that I read this week, or last week, from books from last week that I read this week. Um, I'm just going to pick books that I like or that uh, I think are interesting every week. I'm not going to set any set number. Uh, this week it happened to be six, next week it might be five, four, who knows, but uh, I liked a lot of books this week, and I found a lot of them worth uh, worth talking about. So I'll get started right away, and you can uh, see if you agree with me. So first book is uh, Shadow Doctor. This is uh, uh, based on a, a true story uh, of uh, the author, um, so his name is Peter Galloway. This is from Aftershock Comics. And Peter Galloway's grandfather was um, a doctor. Uh, he was African American, and he uh, he lived back in the in the 1920s. Um, the, sh the story starts when he was uh, as a kid, like a teenager. He's like driving um, uh, trucks and kind of running booths for a local gangster. Uh, they they have this thing in the forest where there's like a, a shootout with a bunch of other crooks. Uh, they were trying to steal their whiskey, and at that point, uh, his grandfather decides, you know, I I'm just gonna. You know, this is not for me. I, if I live through this through this ambush, I'm going to study hard, go to school, and become a doctor. So he did that. And eight years later, he uh, he returns to Chicago, or comes to Chicago, looking for a job uh, as a doctor. Uh, he gets interview after interview, and every place he goes, he's turned down. Uh, and most of the places give him this whole thing like, it's not personal. It's just that you know we can't hire a, a, a Negro doctor. You know, and after a while, he just gets tired of this. Like it's not personal. It's not personal. It's not personal stuff. It's like, all right, well, it doesn't make a damn bit of difference if it's personal or not because you're still not hiring me. So your your words are, are hollow. So after being dis dis discouraged, and it was in the, like the beginning of the depression, I believe it was. Uh, uh, no, it was pre-depression. I'm sorry. Uh, 1931, you know, it was depression, sorry, <laughs> I get my history together, but it was, it was a depression, and uh, gangland Chicago was a, was a big thing back then, and he happened to remember that uh, his old boss, and so he went to, to look up his old boss, and uh, it was just, he goes to the hotel where, where, the, where they hang out, and the doorman gives him shit, tells him he can't come in, and, you know, he won't even give a message to, uh, to his boss on the inside, and just so happens his boss comes downstairs, sees him, you know, tells the, the doorman to, you know, just, just, you know, get out of the way and let him in. And he brings him upstairs. And uh, he decides right then he's gonna have to like, you know, I gotta do what I gotta do. So he's looking for a job as a uh, gangster, as a, a doctor for these gangsters. Uh, this is a, I'm really uh, looking forward to see where this is going. Uh, this. This is probably a very interesting story. The first book, and you kind of know what's happening. Uh, a lot of it's been leaked out already, but uh, it's nice artwork. Uh, it's a good story. They give some historical background. They have the actual pictures of his grandfather and his father um, in the back of the book. And um, this, is, this is another 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 hit from Aftershock, as far as I can I can see. Uh, if you like, you know, historical uh, books like that then um yeah this is a this is one you should check out next book is ha ha number two um this is written by w maxwell prince and drawn by zoe thorgood this is from image also uh, ha ha is wow it's, it's it's a different story every month, just like Ice Cream Man. We've all talked about that. But this one is really, wow, it's really a sad story. Uh, it begins um, in, uh, it doesn't know what, what uh, probably present day, maybe, could be present day. And uh, there's this roadside burlesque uh, place. Maybe it's not so much, uh, burlesque is still around, I guess, but. Uh, it's kind of played like it's not like in the super distant past and these women are going on stage and it's just it's like this terrible house and and we meet this woman who uh, who's about to go on stage 
and do her do her act, and we see her her story, and her story is that um, she, she first of all her name is Rudolph. Uh, her, her mother is is suffering from mental illness, and um, she's she's a uh, this girl loves her mother, and she just you know she's just a kid so she doesn't understand what's going on, and her mother tells her you know, we're gonna we're gonna run away and. and I want you to run away with me to, to Funville. And they, they make these plans of like, oh, let's go to Funville. Everything's going to be so great when we get to Funville. And, you know, and we're not even told what the hell Funville is. You know, you, you see it happening as, as the story develops. And her mother does all these awful things to just uh, to, to, to put uh, food on the table and, and gas in the tank. And uh, she endangers uh, the girl in almost every way that you can imagine, and it, it shows, you know, her what turned her into. It's, it's kind of a, of a cliche story, but it's still it's still realistic and it, it rings true because, uh, personally speaking, I can understand, you know, having a, had a, a, a family member deal with mental illness. Uh, this, this is a real thing, and it affects you. It affects you for life as a child, you know, and if stuff happens to you as a kid, that's going to shape who you are as an adult. And, um, I, I, you know, I, I want to give too much of the story away, but I just say it's, it's, it's not horrifying in a, in, in a, in a monster kind of a way, but it is very horrifying as to what this kid had to go through and, uh, the things that she had to see and the, the effects that it had on her. And plus the fact that she named her Rudolph. I mean, what the fuck? Come on. <laughs> but Ha Ha number two, um, I think it, it's it's another good story from this ongoing, I think a six issue limited series to, to start. This is going to be. So uh, if you're not reading Ha Ha, you can probably pick up an issue out there somewhere. It's got two different covers and uh, I think an incentive cover. And um, yeah, Ha Ha is, is, is for fans of Ice Cream Man and, and stories like that, definitely worth picking up. Next book is from Vault Comics and it's called uh, Hollow Heart, uh, L Hollow Heart. Uh, L is the name of the character who's, uh, who's uh, the lead character in the story. Uh, I got this, was lucky enough to get this uh, Rom Space Knight um, homage cover, which is super cool, but it has another cover also. Um, but, um, and the story takes place uh, at this, it's like this facility. Uh, we don't get a lot of info in this first issue. This is one of those books where it's setting up uh, something else later on down the road. Um, it begins with an L, like just making a break. L is like this, this creature who's uh, he's been made into a creature, uh, apparently. We don't know the whole story yet, so we, we, we jump in, in in the middle of this, this uh, in the action where he's making a break, like he's trying to escape, uh, and he does not escape. The escape is thwarted by, um, you know, this, this one of his keepers. And his armor is damaged. He's, he's like this, this mass of organs uh, held together in a, an exoskeleton. And I don't know what kind of uh, work they're doing on him, what kind of experiment this is, but he's constantly surveilled. Um, they call in this repairman uh, to fix his, his exoskeleton and uh, the repairman gets kind of a starts to build kind of a relationship with him like a like a, a someone with, with a you know with a with a, a puppy or something like that you know and he he kind of starts to feel for L unlike to everyone else who uh, around him he just um, just doesn't care just treats him like another experiment uh, and we kind of start to follow this uh, this this character, this, um, this uh, repairman. His name is Mateo, and he has a life outside of uh, outside of the plant, whatever that that that, uh, that facility is that they're <laughs> they're doing these horrible experiments on people. It's called, and we kind of see what his life is like, and he's kind of like cruising for uh, you know for dates and that kind of thing. Uh, so we don't know what that's going to be about. Uh, maybe that might play a part in the story coming up. And uh, it turns out that L was not trying to 
uh, escape, he was really trying to commit suicide because this, he knew that there was some kind of a tether that held him to, uh, uh, to the plant and if he were to escape, he would immediately die. But he had just uh, come to the point where, you know, I, he just didn't want to live anymore. Uh, at this point, he doesn't seem to be like a really uh, powerful being. I don't know if that will change as the story goes on, uh, but uh, it's clear that L is really going through a, a torturous life, and he may have an ally in this uh, Mateo character. Uh, like I said before, not a lot is given, not a lot of information is given. Uh, that might turn some people off if you don't. Uh, some people want to know everything about uh, the story and the character in the first book. If that doesn't happen, then they're ready to drop it. But uh, I'm going to give us another another issue, uh, you know, just just because I, I want to know what's going on as far as you know what the, the concept. Is. I'm getting an idea, but sometimes it's hard to convey a lot of things when you're dealing with a, a 20 page 20 page or 24 page floppy comic. You, you got to set stuff up, and this is uh, setting stuff up for later. So I I will give it another chance. I don't know if everyone else will, but uh, it's. it's um, there's a lot to be revealed yet, and uh, I'll give it another chance just because of that, that cool cover that I got, so, <laughs> but that's just me. The next book is called Savage. Uh, this is from Valiant Comics, um, written by Max Bemis, uh, illustrated by Nathan Stockman. Um, this Savage is, I think there may have been a, a Savage series before this that I'm not aware of. I just happened to see uh, this one. I thought it looked kind of interesting, even though it kind of like rehashes the, the Tarzan uh, concept over again. Uh, a younger, you know, hipper Tarzan. Uh, this this character is uh, his last name is uh, Kevin Savage, and they call him Savage online. And he's a uh, he's an influencer. He's got a Twitter account. And, uh, he, you know, people love him because he's like this. You know, this this badass who does whatever he wants, you know, he doesn't bathe, you know, and you know, women love him anyway, and it's just like, and he's, he's just kind of, I don't know, he's just kind of, I want to say repulsive, you know, but, but to me it's just kind of like everything uh, that's uh, unpleasant about a lot of people, he just kind of uh, wallows in it, and uh, seems kind of entitled even for a uh, for a savage uh, and it seems like he's been enhanced somehow but you know it doesn't say in this uh, first issue maybe in the original series they may have talked about how uh, his powers are enhanced so he's not just uh, he seems to be jumping from building to building so not just being savage will be able to do that uh, just not just a uh, you know a a guy swinging from vines will be able to just jump from building to a building like like Spider-Man, and he's got like this crazy amount of strength and he's just like this scrawny kid, pretty much. He, he rips a tooth out of a uh, rips out a tooth of a, some kind of a, a giant dinosaur and, and, and stabs him to death with it, and it's just. And he has this uh, assistant. Uh, he has a, a personal assistant that does stuff for him and everything, and he's tired of the life as a as an influencer. You know, it just seems like kind of an ingrate, if you ask me. But you know, this is just this is just my opinion. Uh, he and then there's like some point we move on to that. I don't want to be an influencer anymore. I want to I want to fight dinosaurs again. And there there's some there's some occurrences that happen that that make that kind of come to to light. And, you know, I I didn't really uh, enjoy this book to be honest. Uh, it's just not my demographic, I guess. If you like, uh, you know, insolent, you know, teenagers, then, then uh, or if you are one, then maybe you can relate more to that. But uh, I personally didn't didn't like this book that much. Uh, I'll probably not be picking up a, a second issue of it. Uh, but it was nice to check it out to see what it was about. And actually, what I did find more interesting was uh, at the back there was like a four-page preview of Shadow Man. Um, Valiant's going to trot out their, their old Shadow Man character again. It's been like, I don't know how many, three, three, four in, incarnations of Shadow Man. Uh, this one looks pretty well drawn and it 
might be um, it might be pretty good. So I'll probably give Shadow Man a chance when it comes out, but I will not be buying a second issue of Savage. Uh, the next book is not at all uh, an indie comic book, but it is, um, it's a reprint. It's a facsimile edition of The Black Knight number one from 1954. It's an exact reprint it's, uh, with the ads and everything. Um, only a very few changes to the cover and the back, and no changes to the back cover. Uh, and there's a, there's a, actually there's a slammer in there because there's some, there's some uh, definitely non-PC uh, 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 portrayals of Asians in the middle story called the Crusaders. Um, you know, it's, it's insensitive, you know, it's not terrible, but just like, it's just like, you know, it shows the, the ignorance of the time. Uh, but other than that, this is a really great reproduction uh, with really great art. I think the guy's name is, um, what's this guy's name? Joe Manley? I think Joe Manley. And written by Stan Lee. And I tell you, this, this, this Stan really shines in, in, in writing stuff like this. I know his wife once says that the man is a poet. You know, he considered himself, you know, this, this great writer. And he kind of, I guess, was, the irony was he, he was, kind of forlorn about having to waste his, his life as a, as a comic book writer. We know it became, at the end of his life, there's this huge legend, uh, bigger than life. But he, he really feels at home. I can tell he feels that he's at home um, writing this stuff. This the four suits and the, the widths and all that stuff. He, he's really in his element. It, it makes a lot more sense, uh, the Stan Lee style of writing, than um, some of the stuff he wrote even for, for Marvel. Uh, but this is about, uh, it takes place in uh, Camelot in the time of King Arthur. And uh, there's uh, this uh, character named Sir Percy. And he shows up at, at, uh, at Camelot uh, seeking um, sanctuary because he's lost his land to, um, uh, to uh, interlopers and, and that kind of thing. And he's, he's portraying this, uh, this foppish stereotype of the you know of the the, the alter the, the alter identity of uh, the superhero or of the of the hero. So, but once he gets along with Merlin, Merlin uh, tells him like, "Thank you for coming, Sir Percy, uh, and for posing as this, you know, as this coward, uh, so that we need someone to fight for King Arthur because he doesn't trust uh, Mordred, Mordred and his wife Morgan Le Fay. Uh, so Merlin has devised this armor of the Black Knight." And he wants Sir Percy to be the Black Knight, uh, and and of course Sir Percy becomes the Black Knight, and we get like we get three uh, three stories in this book. We get three illustrated stories, and we get one uh, text sto text story uh, without illustrations, and this is just such a book for uh, for uh, for people like uh, I guess Gen Xers like me I guess or people who. Um, grew up with this kind of stuff. I mean, this is a little before my time even, but I remember reading books like this and um, and it would be like maybe three stories in a book and you're just like, oh my, this is a lot of stories. I mean, this is like, just for, in those days, 10 cents, 12 cents, you know, in my, in my time. So this is a, a really um, well-drawn uh, book for, for people who, who remember a time like this. Well, if you're curious about a time like that, you know, it's a $3.99 book. Um, you can probably pick it up in some places. You may be able to order it online somewhere. But uh, yeah, if you, uh, the whole Black Knight's coming back uh, in a modern form uh, with the King in Black, but if you're just curious about the origin of the character, this, this is a great pickup. So I, I, I would recommend this book. Last book is We Live. Now I've done a review of We Live already, um, and, I, and I, I do love it. Uh, but I just have to mention We Live, we live Again because Wow, and this this is the fifth uh, book in the series. I I didn't I didn't realize when I picked it up that this was going to be the last one of uh, of this volume. Um, it's it's going to this is this this is the first story arc that comes to an end here. This this is where these kids are, are um, they've all been given these uh, these wrists uh, these arm uh, band thingies that will allow them to be uh, taken off planet. To start man, to start humanity all over again on a, on a different planet, 
and this this wraps up that arc of the story and lets you know what's happening with that. Uh, there's, a, there's a part where uh, uh, they're, they're right at zero hour where they got to be in the spaceship to take off and uh, the stuff is going down and there's catastrophes happening and there's like you can imagine an apocalypse. Uh, this is so well drawn. This is, the artwork in here is fantastic. The story, the story is fantastic. And, and it takes a, and I really can't say anything, but I did not see this coming. I, I did not know this is where this book was going to go. And um, <laughs> uh, all I can say is that it's a complete curse. Someone in the, uh, I mentioned uh, I, I, in my haul video last week, you know, that I was, I was looking forward to reading you, you Live, uh, We Live. And someone said, uh, man, you're going to be completely surprised. And they were so right. Um, Man, I, I I don't know what to say about this, but uh, I'm I'm I mean I'm excited to see where it's gonna go when it picks up again. I think later on this year it's gonna uh, number six will come out, or maybe it'll just restart again as with another number one. But the We Live is a winner from Aftershock Comics, which kicks out some really good stuff. So <laughs> check out We Live. Um, that's it for this any comics review. Um, don't forget to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the notifications button so you know when I'm making another video. Um, I just want to say, uh, I guess past, we just recently passed 500 subscribers. Uh, I, I appreciate every one of you subscribers, all, all you folks out there who subscribe. That that's, this is like a, a, a milestone and I appreciate every one of you. So until next time, um, I'll see you guys in my next video. Hey, don't forget to subscribe and leave a thumbs up.